Hi everyone. Well, I am sitting outside and there is a storm on its way. So I'm hoping that the sky doesn't open up before I'm done recording this. But at the same time, what an interesting metaphor, right? I am filming this to talk about some strategies for herbal medicine for dealing with the coronavirus. And in that way, filming it as a storm is coming and may or may not hit any moment now is, you know, quite apt. We are not solely dependent on our supply chains and on hospitals and on, you know, the Western medical system. We have allies in the world around us and in one another. And, you know, maybe you're someone who has had no interest in herbal medicine, but all of a sudden are recognizing that it is possible that the hospitals won't be able to attend to all of the people who get sick if the virus goes the same way in the US as it has in some of the other countries it's affected. So maybe now is the time to start familiarizing yourself and becoming more comfortable with herbal medicine. So it's a huge field and there's so much to know and it's very complex. And I will just throw out there that the more science looks into some of these things, the more it has been scientifically proven that herbal medicine can be really wonderfully helpful in so many ways and particularly often in treating some of those diseases that Western medicine has a hard time with. So let's talk a little bit about what some of those different types of medicines look like. And again, you know, I am not a practicing herbalist. I am not a medical professional. I am someone who has been really interested in ways I can keep my body happy and healthy and functioning strong using those things in the world around me. And that looks like, you know, shelter and clothing and food and medicine as well. So kind of well-rounded and a long-standing interest in these things, not an expert. So take it all with a grain of salt. That said, let's talk about some of the different basic categories of herbal medicines that can be help for, uh, helpful for us in dealing with something like the coronavirus. So the first thing is that a really great class of herbs to know about are those called adaptogens. So adaptogens are like they sound. They are specifically for helping our body adapt to stress and adapt to things that come its way that are going to be hard on our system. Now, a lot of these are specifically supportive to the adrenal system because the adrenals are part of our bodies that get really fatigued with stress, right? That's what we get the word adrenaline comes from, right? Our adrenals are producing stress hormones and doing all they can to help our body cope with these things. So adaptogens are going to be helpful for our adrenal systems. And just in general, there's something that act like a gentle nourishing tonic for our bodies, something that we can take all the time. So they're not so strong that you have to be careful with them in general. And they're just going to help us be more functional, happier, healthier. So some things, um, a lot of the mushrooms are adaptogenic. So, you know, things like turkey tail and reishi and cordyceps, really great adaptogens. Herbs like uh, Siberian ginseng, also known as eleuthero, and rhodiola and chisandra. Licorice is also often considered a mild um, adaptogen, as is turmeric. So two things that are really common. You might even have some herbal tea in your medicine cabinet that has licorice in it or some turmeric on your shelf. So a little extra in what you're cooking, um, a little, you know, licorice spice tea is something that is easy to get at a grocery store. Then Tulsi is another one. So adaptogens, great herbs to, you know, build a relationship with and use regularly because these are things that are going to help keep us strong so that we are more resilient should we encounter viruses or other pathogens in our environment. So then there are herbs that are specifically supportive to our immune systems in a toning way. So we would call these immune tonics. And again, tonics are something that is so gentle that you can take it regularly. 
as opposed to something that you don't want to take long term because it's a little too strong a medicine, right? So a lot of apt the adaptogens could also be considered immune tonics. Those are, you know, really common ones. Um, astragalus is another one. Elderberry is one. And then a lot of those mushrooms that I talked about, uh, reishi, ganoderma, which are closely related, those kind of things great tonics to take all the time. Check out my other videos about incorporating mushroom adaptogens and immune boosters into your system. Um, and then there are going to be things that you take when you have an acute immune issue, like you are, you know, you've been exposed to someone with a cold and you want to boost your system or you're starting to come down with something and you want to do what you can to help your immune system fight it off. So that's like echinacea, right? We hear a lot about echinacea helping our immune systems, but echinacea isn't something that you want to take every day. It's a little, it's a little strong and it's stimulating in a way that isn't necessarily what you want to do to your immune system all the time because that could stress it out if you're demanding it be, you know, in overdrive all the time. So other things are garlic, you know, we talk about eating garlic. Um, usnea is another kind of immune stimulant. Um, bone set is another one. Um, but I would say like echinacea is kind of one of those classic ones like that. So those are all, you know, immune related. But then if, if you're getting sick, then you want to think about herbs that can help with the symptoms of that, right? So a classic one is licorice is really, really soothing for a sore throat. It really numbs the throat tissue so that you're a lot more comfortable. Um, things like things with menthols in them, like eucalyptus and mint that help open up the respiratory system and help us breathe easier and help kind of break up that thick snot and have it be runny so it's easier for us to deal with congestion and that kind of thing. Those are, you know, classic herbs that are good for symptoms. Um, yarrow for fevers, mugwort for headaches things like that. So lots of great things. And this is a huge category that, you know, would be impossible for me to go into here, but there's a lot of good resources out there to look up herbs that are specific for the symptoms that you might be experiencing. Um, another thing is herbs that are specifically to help the body fight infection. So again, there are herbal antibiotics, herbal antivirals out there. So um, elderberry, elderflower, and lemon balm are nice antivirals. Those are definitely a bit more of the gentle ones, but then there are some really strong ones too, like, like golden seal or organ grape. Again, you know, you wouldn't want to use them all the time, but if you've got something major going on, they're great to have in your back pocket. And I really recommend the book by Stephen Harold Buhner, um, herbal antivirals, and then another which is even larger and more comprehensive, herbal antibiotics, with a lot of specific information about some of these specific herbs, some of which are native in the U.S. and to different parts around the U.S., some of which are from other countries but can be grown here in the U.S. So, you know, just building a relationship with some of these it's going to be a really great way to go and it's possible you might have some of them growing in your area and they're a wildflower that you've long appreciated but never knew actually had medicinal properties as well so awesome time to empower yourself with this knowledge um, then also there's going to be herbs that are specific to support those systems in your body that get stressed by fighting infections. So a great example is the liver. You know, when we're, when our immune system is finding an infection, it's killing off all of the, all of the pathogen cells. And then we have all of these dead virus or bacteria or what have you cells in our system. And those are hard for our body to deal with. There are a lot of toxins and our liver is what you know, what helps us process toxins and get them out of our body. So our liver can be stressed when we have other health issues. So herbs that support your liver are going to be a really nice thing to think about, especially, you know, knowing that there is potentially a dangerous virus out there, doing something now so that all of your systems are functioning really well and in top-notch order that is going to be a great idea. Um, so herbs that are good for the liver are often bitter herbs. And you know, in, in the US, we tend not to have bitter things in our diet as much, but they are really good for us. So um, a lot of the, the deep tap-rooted herbs are gonna be really good for your liver and also have nutrition. So things like yellow dock and dandelion and chicory. Um, Stephen Harold Buhner has liver and spleen supporting protocols for fighting 
coronavirus. Um, and then another category finally that I want to talk about is herbs to support our nervous systems and help keep us calm and grounded. You know, right now with all of the fear and panic happening, it's easy to be a little spun out. You know, people are watching the news so much and that's filling them with a lot of fear or glued to social media. You know, I, I have been prone to that too, I'm not gonna lie, but it's nice to have practices to put the phone down once in a while, stop looking at it, and then herbs that are just gonna be gently helping us stay calm and centered or helping us sleep if we can't turn off the, the worry in our minds when we're laying in bed. So those would be herbs like skull cap, milky oats, um, valerian, pedicularis, some of these that are specifically, like milky oats, specifically really nourishing to our actual neurons, the actual cells that send the nervous system signals. And some of the others are just kind of down-regulating, like valerian can help us sleep. Um, kava kava is another one, catnip, mint, some of those, you know, sleepy time teas, nighttime teas, a lot of those are these very gentle, nourishing, calming actions and that's something that could be really helpful to have on hand right now. So again, you know, some of those things I mentioned are things that you can find in a grocery store like like the mints and the chamomile, um, lavender is another one, um, or some of them you can mail order or even better getting to know the woods around you if that's something you have access to or even you know, the weeds growing in the field next door if wild spaces aren't something that you can get to. Dandelion, super, super common weed that grows in lawns. You know, you want to make sure they're not sprayed and dogs haven't been peeing on them. Um, Usnea, which is an herbal antibiotic, it is a lichen that grows on trees and, you know, you can probably find it in, in more developed areas because it doesn't even need soil so long as there's trees growing. Um, Cedar is a powerful medicine. I'm looking at a cedar growing right here. Um, that's gonna be really good for the respiratory system if you do end up having a compromised respiratory system. So, you know, just kinda thinking out of the box, looking at what's around you, and knowing that there are a lot of resources that you maybe haven't had to depend on before because we've had, you know, all the freedom in the world to order things from all over <laughs> and find them in grocery stores or order them to our doors, things are shifting a little bit and maybe that can be a beautiful thing and help get us in touch with what's actually right around us all. So that is my prayer for you all, that and that you stay healthy and well. May we face this thing from a place of empowerment and building our skill set and our knowledge rather than from a place of fear. And may we be, you know, more devoted to our health and well being as individuals and communities as we go through all of this. Thanks so much for joining me. Please subscribe and click the little bell that will give you notifications. And if you're able, please consider supporting me on Patreon which you can find at Wonia Buckskin Revolution on Patreon. And check out my website, buckskinrevolution.com, where I have a mailing list to keep you advised of my classes and all the stuff that I am doing to spread these skills. Thanks so much, everyone.